Should be loading. Uh, yeah, I'm. Hey everybody, how are you guys? Looks like we got some people in here. It's kind of worried for a second. Oh, beautiful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Pin Pals here. Um, tonight's special guest is Lana. She is gonna give us more information on her website and what she's doing and grateful to you have her on. Oh, well, beautiful. Hi. Well, I first want to say that I'm really sorry um, to hear about your dad. Um, so I am, uh, I'm live here to, um, to hopefully bring you some, you know, laughs and uh, get your mind off of things for a little bit. So thank you. Hmm. Mm. You got some uh, chatters in here. Hi, guys. How are you? Let me say hello. Um, you should be able to see the chat. I don't know from. I can see it. I can see it. Uh, yeah, guys, the website, everything's uh, going uh, going accordingly. You know, when you have a ten thousand person, like it's a member login, so with protective information, uh, you have to do extra tests, um, but. Uh, we'll obviously have everything good to go with the content, uh, double checking of like, you know, spelling, you just stuff like that. You just, if you're going to launch something, you want it to look right. Um, you want it to have the information that's needed. Um, like I said, this website will be listing um, Chris's lawyers. So I had to get the approval, obviously, from them. Um, and with their approval, which I got. Uh, so we were able to do that. Um, and then also you're going to have one of your pages is a uh, podcast. So it's a $10 flat membership fee. It doesn't go up. Um, it stays at $10. You have the option though to pay, um, you know, reoccurring month to month. You can pay, you know, three months, six months, it's up to you. I know some people wanted that to be able to just pay and not have to worry about it. Um, there's also a one-time donation button, uh, which if you just, you know, want to donate uh, for the cause and for the family, you have that option. Um, it doesn't make you a member, but you have that option just to donate and not be a part of it. So hello, everybody. I see uh, some chatters in there um but is it sorry go it, ahead oh no go ahead hon oh it's just it does it take time to get recognized as an, a non-profit or how long to get mm -hmm. the license and everything yeah so we i went ahead and did all the filings beginning on february 24th um and then when you have a non-profit you actually have to have another company uh another agency company that actually uh holds your licenses part of me that's just one of the things that with a nonprofit you have to do uh, so i have let's see who's my holder here i'm pulling up my stuff so i can uh let's see um, oops dashboard sorry i'm going to this no website for it um yeah you can expedite everything and that's what we did i did i, I expedited it um and so i could do a three business days uh, it's called express it's a it's a premium package it gets you your you know your ein obtainment 
uh, your operating bylaws, banking resolution, um, seller's permits. You know, you, you got to get all this stuff, but something that people don't realize with a nonprofit is you also have to have um, a registered agent. Um, hold, like they're part of, they, they say they hold your license. They're that's just, you can either recommend somebody or if you know of an agency that's not like they will, will hold it for you, or you can let the companies out there that you go through to file, the file with the state. Um, uh -huh. so I asked them to do it and they gave me my registered agent is Legal Corp Solutions LLC. So they teamed me up with, uh, they're out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Um, so you have to have another agency that holds your license and is, you know, making sure what they, what everybody does is they check up on everybody just to make sure, you know, every couple months that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so kind of like a big brother watching over you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Also, it's just the way that, you know, um, the reason we went, you know, the whole, the whole point is with a nonprofit guys, it's, that means the company doesn't profit. Okay. Um, that means everything uh, that comes in, goes out in some form. And that form is uh, going to be for the families to obtain, le you know, legal counsel, uh, professional services, uh, as well as, you know, we have to pay for people to do things. People need to be, um, you know, running this organization. So everything is on legit on paper. You can look everything up. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of chit chat about this about the fact that the website is .com. I actually have three different domain names. So what that means is when you have a domain name, you can have multiple domain names that go to the same website. So for instance, um, you have, if you have, you know, fightforafamily.com, if I have fightforafamily.org, if I have 35chris.com, if I have the rich man's game, you know, dot com. Uh, I can have multiple domain names that will lead you to one website, um, okay. and it's a lot easier for people to remember the whole dot com. Um, but that's just the you know, that's your domain, and you can send multiple domains to the same website. So. And that's what's in the process right now is linking up the other names that I bought to, you know, facil facilitate, you know, when I take on other cases, like how this one's, you know, going to be called 35 Chris. If we had something that, you know, was uh, reach out for Rachel, you know, dot com. Um, that's because that's the name of that case. So that would also, I'd buy that donate domain name and it would then go to that website, which is the fight for the family you know, website. So just because you see something or you type something in, um, there's multiple things that you could type in that will get you to the, actually that website. Okay. So it's, um, again, there's several ways you can get to the website. It doesn't really matter if it's .com, .org. Yeah. I mean, because I know people were saying, well, if you're not .org, how are you a nonprofit or something like that? And I'm saying we're, well, we're not .com. We're, these are domain names that take you to the website. Okay. Um, right. We are fight for a family Inc. And it's a nonprofit. I mean, we're not fight. Our, our name isn't fight for a family.com. Our name is fight for a family Inc. And it's a nonprofit organization. So um, how, How's everything been running so far with the, the website and people subscribing and. Yeah, we already have like, I think there's something like 14 or 1500 uh, pre-registration, you know, uh, people out there now, whether or not, you know, they sign up or uh, there was a couple people that put like, you know, fu.com. I mean, that stuff gets, it, it, it's just listed as spam. And this site is just, really solid with everything that it does. I mean, it's uh, really well put together and a lot of security. Obviously we want to protect, um, protect what this is designed to do. Um, this is not to come in and, you know, everybody gets their own login and password and everything like that. But you don't come in 
and start chatting like you're in some, I mean, this is a website that's informative. Um, and there's also what the members get out of it. You have to think about this as like you're donating um, to be the reason that a family can fight for justice and fight for truth. So, but we're just giving something back, which is there's going to be a podcast on it. That's a weekly podcast. So. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. So how, how often will um, this podcast be going? Hmm? How often will the podcast be going like once or yeah. twice a week? Yeah, it launches in April and it just it's once a week with a with the episode. They're all pre-recorded. It's all audio, not visual. Um so awesome. Yeah, well, I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy yeah, the podcast and everything once you get that up and going. And again, uh, there's been ch uh, chatter like the website. It's not say people are just trying to take your money. Um, again, I'm sure what you're saying we, is very secure. And party. Yeah, we use a third party. Um, Authorized.net. It's, it's just like anything when you go on the internet and you go to buy, you know, you go to Under Armour and you buy sweatpants. Uh, you're going to a, a cart just like that. Um, and it's op it's all through a third party, so uh, you have to have a gateway payment option, and you have to set all that stuff up. It has to be tested. Um, I had to get approved. So, like, that's the other thing is you're not getting uh, lines of credit, and you're not getting approved through an e merchant service provider. They huh? run your, you know, they run everything on you. You're not getting. Um, approved for stuff like that if you have bad credit if you're you know whatever's being said out there I'm saying you're not able to get approved for that if you have if you don't have you know, good credit you can't pass your background checks and you can't you know just that's how that's how it works it's like anything oh, okay awesome I probably want to pass I have terrible credits <laughs> take some time on that um, so <laughs> So um, what else has been going on? I guess what you can mention about has Chris, do you, have you guys found any lawyers or talked to any about? He's already on 30 attorneys. So it's, uh, and that's why actually I said, I like my farewell to the tubes, my farewell to even my Facebook group is I will no longer be able to talk about anything here uh, beginning on Monday. So I have like my final Facebook uh, meet up with them. Um, love you guys. I know that there's people here. So um, love all of you guys. But yeah, it's, I mean, there's really not much to talk about other than like everybody else is going to see. I mean, he's going to be going to the post litigation um, or the post conviction litigation process. Um, anybody out there that doesn't think that a lawyer touched this? Well, four of them did. Um, so you're completely wrong. Uh, we'll be announced. Like I said, the website will have all of that on there. Um, and he's this got, is, he's sorry, got, go ahead. Yeah, he's got the best in the business. So, and like I said, that's all <clears throat> you'll you'll hear you'll hear all about that uh, come Monday. Uh, like I said, the website will have it all. Um, I'm just really happy for the family that they're able, you know, to finally. You know, they've been through like two and a half years and just the stuff that's gone on. Really, the state of Colorado failed both families, if you ask me. Um, you're, you know, both, both families are, you know, victims and it's a quality when you're talking about a victim, but no one's a more of a victim than the other person. I mean, victims are victims and they should be treated as such. Oh, and no, I the Watts were treated as perpetrators. And um, I think that that's just crazy because nobody should ever bury a child. You know, a parent should never bury a child. A grandparent should never bury a grandkid. Uh, they didn't even get to go to their, you know, their funeral. I mean, that's just, yeah. it's uh, no. 
And, so I, uh, try if, you out, if you take out the emotions of everything and you just look at the families, uh, if the Rusics were, you know, in the same situation and they wanted the truth and they wanted justice, I mean, I would be backing any family that wanted that. Um, I know that some people think that the truth uh, is already out there and guess what? That's their right to, to, to feel that way. So therefore like we accept that that's what you think and that's how you feel. All we're asking is for you to accept that they don't feel that way and let them, you know, go get if the truth and the justice that they're entitled to, you know, if we all are allowed to feel and think a certain way, why can't the Watsons? Why can't any yeah. family? And that's my main thing is too, um, regardless of the crime, uh, you know, we all have rights and should be, you know, equivalent or all the due process should be the same and equal. There's so many people in this country that get corroded all the time. I, I'm myself was one of them. And um, I think this is good. We're, you know, finally starting to fight back to make sure the, the justice is equal and fair and balanced. Uh, yeah, I think that if you live in the United States of America and you believe like you should believe in the U.S. Constitution and that's, I mean, that's all you're fighting for. I mean, you're not just because you're standing up for one family doesn't mean you're putting down another family. Um, and I, I think that that's where people in with this case get a little, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like you have to pick sides. And I think that's the way wrong approach to it. Like I said, I think Colorado failed both of these families, uh, the state of Colorado that is, and they had no business putting out a discovery that, that looked like that. Um, if they wanted uh, to show that Christopher, you know, did everything and, you know, yada, 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 well, then you should be producing something that, that shows that you shouldn't be producing what you did. And it actually shows that, wow, we, we, it looks like the cops have everything wrong. I mean, it's just bad. So I think that they owe the Rusics uh, a huge apology. I mean, I, <laughs> that was supposed to be Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico's voice was the discovery, just to, like put a stamp on it. Like, you know, that plea deal happened all within, you know, two and a half, three months. And the fastest that's ever happened, that's unheard of that time. Um, you got public defenders getting on planes and flying out to hush the Watts family from trying to get a good lawyer. I mean, there's just stuff in this case that you just never, you know, that stuff has never been seen before, heard before. That's not normal. Uh, it's abnormal. And why? The answer, I mean, the question is why? If they want to get a lawyer for their son, I've just never seen or heard of a public defender getting on a plane flying across the country within a day to tell them, hey, get off social media. And we're, you know, he's got the best, you know, attorneys and we have the best resources. I mean, that to me, if you have all those things and you have that, then why aren't you doing a job? Oh, yeah, most certainly. And um, again, I think with the website and what you're doing is where it can help other families, you know, to retain a decent lawyer to help the due process go out. I don't know, you know, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you know, you have certain rights and those need to be protected until you get um, convicted. Yeah, I, I think that that's exactly. I mean, everybody out here wants to know about Nicole Kessinger. Well, guess what? If there would have been a trial, if there would have been, you know, an actual investigation that led to then a trial. I mean, you have to remember, we were just in the gathering of evidence stage. Um, for those that are that are in chat or you're listening, um, the, you know, his public defenders filed on August 29th with, you know, the courts. They put a motion in and it said, we have not received a single piece of discovery yet. So what I want to bring up here today is I went ahead and looked at how many reports, like actual reports 
were not handwritten, but actually typed up and then handed over to their superior. Okay. So um, when, right. when I went ahead and did this and I looked at this because I want to know everything that happened that's in a report up until August 29th. Okay. And when I did okay. that, the CBI, 41 reports that were typed up out of, um, they had like, nah, how many did I have? I know that the police department had oh, like a hundred re reports that came with this. So the CBI at that point had 41 typed up reports, like witness statements, um, uh, when they were going through and executing, you know, obviously searches, um, anything that they did in the investigation, the CBI had 41 reports already typed up. The FBI had 12 reports typed up and the PD and the PD had 40. So that is 93 pieces, they call them pieces of evidence, any which way you type it, it's evidence. There's 93 reports by August 29th and the defense is saying that they didn't receive a single piece of discovery. And at that point there was 93. So someone's like, you know what I'm saying? Like either the defense really did get it or the defense didn't. Yeah. But the weird thing about it is, is that on September 6th, when Rorick had to do his you know, response to that, he never mentions it. And then when the judge gave the order on September 10th, the judge never says like, you know, we're like, the judge ordered the DA or asked the DA, what haven't you turned over? What do you have so far? I mean, none of that was talked about, but meanwhile, it was in a motion and it's supposed to be uh, ordered on. And yeah. it wasn't. And it wasn't. And why do you think it took so long for him to start giving the paperwork or discovery well, to uh, the defense? The other thing is, you don't know, like, what really went on. Uh, when his new attorneys get his file, though, they're going to know everything down to the minute of everything's E served. So when when anything was given to the, to the prosecution that was like, OK, here, they turned over this report and it's put in. Um, and it was downloaded. You're going to know every date, it literally timestamp minute down to the minute that the, the prosecution had it. And then you're going to know every single minute of when the prosecution sent it over to the defense. And not only are you going to know that timestamp, but you're also going to know when the defense team actually clicked and downloaded the, the evidence. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, so when you get all of that, then you can actually go into, that's where the whole ineffective counsel comes in, but how you can be advising anybody up, like up at that point, you don't have anything. I mean, what did, what did your investigators do? Who did the, who did the public defenders hire to be their experts? Did they get, you know, um, a false confession expert? Did they get, you know, who were they hiring to start doing work um, on their behalf for their client? Because remember what I said, the public defense, we have the, it's free. We have the best resources. We can get anybody and we're going to we have, we have to do this, that, and the other. You don't need to go and hire an attorney for your son and what, pay a million dollars and, you know, it's going to cost this, this, but we can do this all for free. You just need to get off of social media and, you know, basically, that was that and it's just like, that's unheard of yeah no I, and especially the process of going through it's ridiculous i mean <laughs> murder cases they take like a year and a half to two years to prepare for and get ready i just i can't believe how quickly they slammed this through and he signed that plea deal um do you think he was mentally broken down or um he was there for 93 days and they wouldn't allow him to see his family or talk to him? Or why do you think he went so quickly to sign that plea deal? I think that's all gonna come out. Um, I think that it's not professionally, I mean, so it's not a big secret he wasn't professionally examined, but 
um, all that's going to come out. And it's even going to go back further to the point of, um, I like to say, along came Polly, the polygraph. It's all going to come back to a lot of things that were done in this investigation and what law enforcement did and didn't do, what's procedure, what's not. Um, and I think when, you know, this is all said and done, I think a lot of people are going to be singing a totally different tune um, because like I said, it doesn't matter what side you think you are. I don't think anybody should be on sides here. It's a horrible thing. You know, it's a horrible situation, like no sides and something like this. I think that when this all comes out, I think the side that everybody should be on is that we're all United States citizens. Okay. And we should all have a problem with how Colorado handled this from start to finish. Oh, most definitely. And, and again, if, that's where it agreed. Uh, if you can't get behind that, then I just think that, you know, I, yeah, I think that if, if you, anybody that you loved was ever in the situation, anybody that, you know, you cared about it, I just don't think that at the end of the day, if he's so guilty, he's such a monster, well, then just prove it and do it the right way. I don't understand why anybody would have a problem with that. Um, yeah. And uh, for everybody here, you know, we're curious on what happened that night when you want the truth to come out. Who, so who wouldn't want the right information and the truth to be out and available so we can all have those answer, answers to the questions? Yeah. And, and I think that people also miss the boat with where the truth's going to come out. It's not, it's not going to be in someone's like, it's not going to be Christopher telling us the truth. I think that, oh, people say, oh, what? So we can hear him lie again. Um, no, I said to me, the truth is always, the truth always lies in the evidence. Okay. Uh -huh. And you got to get all these organizations. You got the CBI, you got the FBI, you got police departments, not just one multiple. Um, so you got all these agencies on this case, right? There's a lot of, um, a lot of evidence and let the evidence speak for the truth. Yeah, why do you think Chris, uh, is he just trying to protect himself or why is he always taking confessions and twisting them instead of just coming out saying what happened? Is it like a defensive mechanism or anything that you know? Or I think when you don't know what happened, it's hard to tell somebody what happened. That, that's okay. what I'm saying. False confession is anything, if you don't say a part of, if I saw you a sentence or four sentences, Peter, I tell you, you know, hey, I woke up this morning, I went to Subway, had a ham sandwich, then I went to the gym, and then I came home. Well, if any part of that is not correct, then basically the whole thing isn't correct. Because how, that's what a false confession is when you're not when it's not every part of it. Yeah, no, it's, I agree. It's yeah. Not just like, um, well, all of the, all of the other stuff's gotta be true, but just not this one piece. Like, no, you don't, you, that's why just you investigate. And if things weren't lining up, like I know that they weren't. And if you actually watch Graham and uh, Chris on that Tuesday night, uh, it's, you know, it's in the discovery plus you can, search for, but there was like, mm, he was there from a seven to 11 on that Tuesday night. Uh, I mean, Graham is, you know, asking him questions like things like this. Um, so what, why was, why was Nicole's kids there? And he's like, well, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's their mom. So um, they were just like with their mom and he's like, well, do you know her son, her son? And he's like, no, he's like, do you know what his name is? He's like, um, I, I think his name's Nick. I, Nick. I think it's Nick. Like Chris didn't even know who this man was or boy, whatever, 16 year old kid, or supposedly he's that, right. And here you have Nick because that's why Graham got super confused. And if you actually read the dialogue back and forth, he's like, wait, you don't like, this guy's this little or little boy, this 16 year old is saying that he house sits for them, watches their dog, babysat. And Chris is over here saying he doesn't even, uh, I think it, no, I've never, I've never met him. I don't know him. Like, don't you think that's weird? Yeah, no, it most certainly that's is weird. Uh -huh. And 
Graham was blown away when he's doing this interview with him. If you, I mean, me and my group talk about it and we laugh a little bit because we're like, what's, what's going on here? Like, what do you mean uh, Chris doesn't know who Nick, you know, didn't even really know his name. Uh, no, he, he doesn't know him. And that's when Graham said, well, how well do you know Nicole? Like, why is, well, so Nicole called the police. She was so worried, but then she left and she didn't help you like make phone call. Like, where'd Nicole go? He's like, well, I don't know. She probably went home and was talking to her people, but I don't. And he's like, so, and then what happened? He's like, well, then she came back over, but she just outside. I mean, it was just a really weird, like Graham's like, what's going on here? Like, what is this? Yeah. And why does Nicole? Oops. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I, I just personally believe that you, in order to have a proper defense, you're supposed to look at everything. And that's what you're the job of a public defender or a regular, I mean, any defense attorney. Um, how are you telling your client to take a plea deal and you haven't even looked at one piece of evidence? I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, and it didn't make sense to any of these other attorneys. Um, so it's, uh, there were, uh, we were, uh, I wasn't begging people to take Chris's case. We actually had options. Um, it was about who do you want and you want the best so that you could have a level playing field to take on, um, what you're about to go take on. Uh, Cause if you think that Colorado, if they play dirty like that, how do you think they're going to play during this, you know, uphill post conviction process? Yeah. Um, one thing that is always mind blowing to me is why did uh, Anna have, you know, why did she bring her kids and then allow the little daughter to run all over? You, you can see in the videos it, You'd have to ask her that. Um, something that I wanted to talk about since you brought that up is, you know, if you actually go and you look at supplemental report 13 by the police department, um, it was a nine unit got there and they had two officers there that were, you know, watching the house. They had that house like surrounded, you know, 24 the moment that the, the police ever stepped foot on there. Um, but you know, NA said that her and her son were trying to get in the house, you know, and they were walking around trying to get, you know, seeing the windows, the doors, they were checking, you know, they went to the back door and they said they had that latch over it, you know, at the back door. Um, uh -huh. And she mentions that she's like, but Shanann had, you know, I could see her flip flops. So she's talking about Shanann's flip flops, right? Yeah. Well, on when the canine unit came there, which was Tuesday, okay. Uh, they're asking, you know, Chris questions, um, as well as the police officers that are there to watch the house. And they straight up say to Chris, there's two sets of shoes, like little, you know, girl shoes that are outside on the deck, like right uh, by the door, by the slider. And the officer says, you know, what, well, you know, what's this or whatever? He's like, oh, those are my girl's shoes from, I left them outside. Uh, so they could dry off from when we were, you know, Sunday night, they got them wet because of like the, you know, they were doing like the water stuff at the birthday party. Okay. So something that struck out to me, which was very strange is if you're walking around the house and you're trying to get in. Okay. And you're, you know, you notice her flip flops, but if you're trying to get in and you're on the back deck okay, and you're trying to get in that door, why was there no mention about the little girl's shoes? Like, hey, yeah, Bella and Cece's shoes are out back. Like, I think that that would, like, if, if you're truly walking around and hunting for them, like you claim, you say something about her shoes at the door, but there was no mention about the girl's shoes at the back door. Um, so, I, and, I mean, uh, if you really think about that, how does that get left out that, well, the girl's shoes are at the back door, Shanann's shoes, I mean, that would be talked about unless why. The only reason that that wouldn't be talked about is if you really weren't walking around and trying to get in the house and that you never saw them. Uh-huh. 
Oh, that's that's a very good valid point. Never thought of that. Um, uh, one thing I do believe uh, the mini mouse or downstairs in the basement, the mini mouse blanket that was always unlocked, wasn't it? So people could have gotten in and out just in case. Yeah, that's what instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, another one here for you I have is, so we just talked about, I don't know if we talked about the reports that there was 90, you know, three reports by August 29th, okay? And the, when All the right. defense haven't received a piece, not one single piece, there was 93 typed up, okay? And then something that I want to bring to people's attention is on August 19th, August 19th, I don't know if people know this, but there was, uh, let me grab my book here. There was a, uh, there was a email that came in and it's listed as, um, let's see, what is it under here? If you guys are following at home, you can pull it up if you want. It was, it's, it's supplemental report 35 from the police department. And what I'll do, even I'll flip my, you know, phone around to show you guys, but it says it's a, on August 19th, that they received four emails from this heating and cooling.com email at AOL or at AOL. And they wrote into the police department and that they had, it says, I'll turn this around for you. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. It's saying that on August 19th, the Frederick Police Department received four emails from family heating at AOL.com. Okay. Uh, the emails were sent to the department's email address, which is the Frederick Police at FrederickCo.gov. Frederick All right. And this is literally what this woman wrote in. Okay. And I'll read it, but I want you guys to see the writing. It says, I don't know her will helpful, but my ex caregiver husband works for a company she calls ASCO. I can only assume it's the company Chris Watts worked for. She said she was having an on and off affair with one of the guys that Rackens dismissed and her husband was up for his job. She's very promiscuous. <laughs> and that's, and that's, uh, and that's not out of character. She said a guy named Chris, she'd been talking to coming back. This was back in May. They spoke though the calculator private message app of phones. The woman's name is Heidi Ferris. It's, it just sounded all too familiar. Not to share as this really sounded like the guy she spoke of. She said he was married, had two kids. She wasn't looking for anything serious, but most of these men are with, <laughs> may want to check out Heidi Ferris. She also talks to them on Facebook, but mostly the hidden text app. This may be the affair that is said that be something you may want to check out, okay? She then says that Heidi Ferris lives in Falcon, Colorado, or, and, and, but, I, but has slept with her, um, by her own account, half the company and used, and, and that he worked for ASCO. I mean, I'm reading it how she wrote it, how she wrote it. She also has been seen with Randy, the utility workers and tattoo artists. <laughs> And this lady gets around. <laughs> so I'm reading this and I'm like, what, how is this an evidence right now? And then I continue on and I listen and it says right here, she says, she may by now have erased any messages, but if you have his phone, I check for that app. It's a calculator, but if you put a special code in, it becomes a text app. Good luck and may this poor family rest in peace. Okay. 
So right. she says this. She says this, all right? Then she immediately emails back and says, the email is hard to read and at times does not make sense. Additionally, there was no contact. This is what the officer is saying. Like, I couldn't make this out, you know? And he's just noting that there was no contact info attached to the phone. It just no phone number, no nothing. It just simply came from this family heating. And then a couple minutes later, sorry, I'm part, I'm partly blind. My typing skills are horrible. Hope you got the gist. What? (laughs) And then she emails again and says that she had some snapshots she wanted to show. And, and it was just, at first you just think to yourself, you're like, okay, this, like, what is this? It's gotta be crazy, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, I got a big laugh about it because why would they, like, could they at least redact Heidi Ferris? I mean, does she need to be drugged through the mud? <laughs> this is crazy. But in all honesty, it was, um, I went back and looked at that and I said to myself, well, that's funny. Who's mentioning this calculator app? For, like, this is the first time there's any mention of this calculator app, okay? Yeah. And it's coming from this, you know, a made up account, which is family heating at AOL.com. It's a, if you go and actually look it up, um, but the whole point of this, whatever you want to call this, is about this calculator app. And so I got to thinking, and I personally, if, if, obviously they're still going to have these records, but I would love to know who has the email address heating and cooling at AOL and wrote in this stuff. But it was all about basically an anonymous person saying you need to look into the calculator app. Uh, and the reason I'm even bringing this up is because when you actually sell dump their phones using like the software technology that they use, uh-huh. you, you cannot get the information out of a calculator app like that. You have to get a, um, a different warrant and you have to get, and you're going to like put that in to get that information. I mean, it just, it doesn't come with doing just a solve right now. Um, so I just thought that, that was interesting of all the things that somebody could say, like, check his Facebook messenger. Okay. Check his Snapchat, check his, you know, to nail it and say, check this secret calculator app. And it's coming from supposedly a partially blind woman talking about some poor woman, Heidi Ferris about being her promiscuous. I mean, I was just like, wow. Um, poor Heidi is in the discovery of Christopher Watts. <laughs> <laughs> in part people. Um, you know, who's Randy? Who are the tattoo artists? Like, this is just crazy. Um, but if you think about it and you actually want to investigate a case, this came in on August 19th. So, I mean, if you look at the dates, the 13th, you know, is Monday, the 15th was the Wednesday. And then the 19th, so four days later from, uh, his, confession of you know being in the interrogation room whatever he said there uh then literally four days later you have a personally blind woman making it known to the frederick police department about a calculator app um and i just think that it wasn't about his facebook messenger it wasn't about you know instagram messenger it wasn't about snapchat it was out of the blue about the secret calculator app and and it's from a you know nobody like the, like the cop said they didn't say their name they didn't say their phone number they said nothing uh but put in an email form didn't call in and like give like a tip or anything like that they did it through email um and i would think that if i was if i couldn't really see that well i would probably call in because why would i want to put myself through typing i can't see um, and I thought, well, if someone's playing like a sick joke, like, I mean, that's sad to, to do that. But at the end of the day, this person, whoever it was knew about this calculator app. That's what I believe. 
Yeah, and how would they know that? Calculator app even got on the map. You know, they wouldn't have found like because you can't find that service by just doing a cell right dump. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, when they plugged in everybody's phones, anybody that had this type of an app, you can't, um, uh, you can't do, you know, that's not gonna come up, so. Yeah, and I, I guess another thing too, with along these like um, people are, that come out saying they had an affair with uh, Chris as that Trent Bolton and then that Amanda, do you think that they just wanted 15 minutes of fame or do you think there's, really something associated there or what's your thoughts on that um me personally i think that this the, the fbi because that was um i'm sorry the cbi agent that was tammy lee uh literally spent all of her time with trent bolt uh again though something that should have never made it out to the public okay um that's how is all this stuff getting out to the public on who you're interviewing, I mean, what's going on here? And then once it did get out there, you didn't shut it down and they had all the evidence in the world to shut it down because they knew it was false, but they didn't do any damage control with that. And that was another big problem. So do I think, I mean, it doesn't matter the, what those people were doing. Honestly, none of that matters. It matters what the law enforcement agencies did not do. And that's what I'm saying from top to bottom, they, I mean, it was bad. And now maybe Tammy Lee didn't know that, uh, you know, she's like thinking, well, I'm just at my investigative point. So I'm just like, uh, I'm getting statements from everybody. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I would think Trent Bolt is, uh, is not gonna be where I'm spending my time. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just interesting to me how how they would add this stuff into the discovery if it was kind of irrelevant in the investigation going on. It's always been mind blow blowing to me why they would have stupid stuff like that in there. Um, why they would have in the discovery? Uh, yeah, it just it seemed like it wasn't applicable, it, but. They, uh, you should ask them why they spent all their time on that. They, and that's just not that Trent Bolt situation. There's other situations like, I said, but I thought it was interesting that uh, this calculator app gets mentioned like that. Um, and it's like, what do people know who really said that? I mean, it just, you, have, you should really be stretching your head and they'll, they'll figure that all out. I mean, that's, when you have uh, good people and they do their job, like we would, none of us would be here today talking about this. If Very true. like the right people were, you know, if everybody was doing their jobs uh, and not getting rid of, when they were doing their jobs. So, yeah. I, well, uh, so, uh, it, it does Chris seem to be excited about um, what's going on, the, um, the changes and the new information coming through? Yeah, he's stoked. Uh, he is in great spirits and he's going to, you know, like I said, he'll be able to finally work with you know, lawyers that want to actually talk to him and, you know, defend him like you're supposed to do. Um, that it's just, like I said, nobody should be upset about this. Um, everybody should be happy about people's rights. And uh, this website allows people like me, like you, like, like all of us, it allows us to be able to level the playing field. Um, if you go and you get, uh, you know, a twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollar retainer lawyer, I mean, you don't first of all stand a chance because that money's gone in a second. Um, but number two, anybody that's going to take this case and they know how to do it and what it takes to win because they win them. Um, then that's why the money and how it's so expensive, it, it all equals out. I mean, if your divorce costs you $40,000, how do you think that you're going to, you know, get, go through this type of a process with 50? I mean, that's not, it's not logical. 
Yeah, no, um, definitely. Um, just a short story about me. Uh, I was picked up on a dean charge for a DUI. And uh, when I got a uh, police officer served me the paperwork on the day I was supposed to go to court, I didn't know exactly where the, the courtroom was and went into where the clerks are. And she's told me, oh, you don't even have to be here today. I'm sending you in the system. So obviously I missed uh, my court appearance. Two weeks later, there was a warrant out for my arrest on, you know, just misinformation or whatever and tried to get the courts to look at it. And got railroaded. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's like anything, you know, if you're getting pulled over for like a speeding, you know, you something where an, an officer comes up to your, sometimes you get good guys, sometimes you get pricks. Um, honestly, like, that's, that's just dealing with humans, though, I feel like, anyways. Um, but you can take out the human element of it if you just, if you let, the, the, the reason it's called due process is you let something play out. Um, exactly. It, and that's what should be happening. Um, you know, a question I have about everything is when you put Christopher at Survey 319 that morning, um, it's in evidence it's, or it's in the discovery, rather than say evidence, say discovery. It's in the discovery that <clears throat> Christopher's uh, work phone doesn't have him getting to Rogan until 9.02. Okay. Um, and obviously, like, well, well where was he? Because he was at Serbia at, you know, 6.31 a.m. So how is, how is that possible? And they want to say that his phone wasn't on network. Okay. Um, right. Which, okay. I thought about that. Well, then why did you make it seem like when Chris was using his personal cell phone, you guys labeled it as he was using his work phone. Like they're, they're mixing on purpose things from, 6 30 in the morning until literally 10 okay and their flip-flop right. phone I means you want to say oh they just made an honest mistake you don't make an honest mistake six times in a row you don't make it in multiple places and you're getting this information when you dump somebody's phone it's you're not typing anything up it's there and you're extracting it and you're putting it like how are you messing that up you'd have to physically change a number you have to physically do something like that. It's called tampering with evidence, what that is, to fit your yeah. narrative. And well, it's because they were shitting bricks when they when they got back certain information. And uh, that's why none of this timeline stuff makes sense. Uh, that's why I did a huge Excel sheet about it. And I mean, it is black and white. And so I presented all of this and like I said, got the best, best attorneys for him. Uh, like I said, in the, this is their specialty. This is what they focus on. And they all have amazing um, resumes. So uh, I'm just so, I, I'm relieved for the family for once. Like I said, two and a half years going through uh, just this, I mean, this grade school people doing like chatting behind each other's back. I mean, it's just like, I just, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm over yeah. here and I'm like, what's going on? It's just nuts. And then, uh, it's like, I don't know with, with, with anything. Yeah. It, again, that's why I want to be right here is. Hello? Oh, someone calling you? Hey. <laughs> No, just you. <laughs> no, that's um, that's my uh, roommate's phone going off. My wow. headphones they pick up everything for some reason. <laughs> but kind of uh, what I appreciate what you're doing about this. And again, it's you know goes back to the Constitution is the 
due process and our rights and not get railroaded. I don't understand why people would be against that. I understand you have opinion about this case and what happened, but any family, any member, if you've been affected by the judicial system, you know, you want it to be fair and honest. And it's just mind blowing to me on how they don't want that. And I think, again, with the, the Watts case, this is a good example of what happened to him. And, you know, again, if he did it, he's right where he needs to be. If he didn't, take him back to trial and let's have the truth. Again, it's just yeah, well, mind-blowing to me. And the, and the family has said it numerous times. They just want the truth, whatever that may be. If it means he did everything, then they have their closure. Um, if it means, you know, he didn't, if it, whatever comes about this, uh, that is what they want. Uh, they want the truth. Those were their grandchildren. Okay. They want to know what happened to their grandchildren. Okay. Uh, Chris also has a sister. She had nieces. You know what I mean? They want to know how did this happen? Okay. I think of another miss, you know, conception going around is you got a guy that's never been in trouble in his life. Okay. Um, you got a guy that's never been in trouble in his life uh, with the law, nothing. Um, now there's not a single bad person. There's not a single person out there that can talk poorly about him and his character. Right. So yes, I think to wonder how this happened, what happened. I think that that is a normal, I know I would have those questions. Um, I think that that's normal. And then, yeah. It's, they're victims. They, they're, they're not, they were not co-conspirators. They were not, I mean, these are people that are like everybody else, normal, simple, like follow, follow the rules. Don't get in trouble. I mean, don't you think if like this family was, I don't know, crazy people and just like not good people and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's easy to have smear campaigns out there. But there's, what can you say about these people's past that they've ever done that's shady or, I mean, how, I mean, how can you, they lost their, they lost their whole family that day, just like every, just like the Rusics did. Both families yeah. lost everything that day. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know like special circumstances, like you can't even really, you know, touch that person. If they were convicted or not. Yep. Yeah, soon behind a glass door and not to have that human interaction. I'm sure it's very difficult. I don't think people understand that and the limited communication. Yeah, it's unfortunate what happened to Shanann, but you know, this is the sole survivor of this family, what happened. And you know, they love him just as much as the Ruziks love Shanann and those girls. So why, why is it so hard to believe the Watts don't love their grandchildren as much as the Ruziks did. It's just mind boggling to me. And like yeah. you're saying, they just want the truth. Yeah, and I think that the district attorney and like the law enforcement agencies, if they would have done the right thing and made sure that both families were treated like victims and not, I mean, the DA never talked to, you know, Ronnie and Cindy Watts. They never, he never talked to them. He never, I mean, that, but that's not how he handled it. And that's like, that's called, that's gross negligence is what that is. And it's, you could sue somebody, you could sue Colorado over that. You could sue uh, the victim's rights, you know, you could, there's things that can be, that can happen because of those negligent acts. I mean, you're letting a family, you, got, you let a family get pummeled and they didn't do anything remotely wrong. They were victims and you you were supposed to stand by both families because they were both victims. Yeah. And it, it was a uh, mind boggling to me uh, when he was getting sentenced and everything the the representative for the Watts and what she said, is that true that uh, the Watts didn't have an idea on what she was going to say on speak on their behalf? What was that? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the 
the spokesperson for the Wads when Chris was getting sentenced, do they really not have a clue on what she was going to say? Or oh yeah, I mean no, that was no. They um, in fact, like a couple things wanted to happen. I mean, Chris wanted to speak at the sentencing, and his attorneys told him that he was not allowed to. There was so many things that happened with everything to do about that. Is <laughs> just. Uh, it, it's all going to come out, though. Like that, when I said the truth, guys, the truth isn't the end result. Okay, the truth is every aspect of this of this case is the truth. Like everything is going to come out. That everything has happened from day one on August, you know, thirteenth, and everything that's transpired. That's what the truth is. It's everything's going to come out, um, and as it should. It's not just the end result is the truth. It's everything that goes along with it and it's everything that led up to august 13th that truth is going to come out i mean you have you have police detectives that had two hundred thousand text messages were in shanann's phone two hundred thousand okay um and they did a 50 page supplemental report of the narrative of what happened in their lives 50 pages to span six weeks when you're talking about somebody that texted and had 200,000, it's in the discovery. That's the proof of it. So it's in there. Um, it says it right there. When they, when they dumped her phone, it, I mean, it says right there, it says this phone had 200,000 messages. Um, it's, you cannot sum up this case in, in 50 pages when all they did all their communication was, was like, there was so much texting. Well, where's it all at? No, they don't. They only put in things the way that they wanted to, to, to show a certain narrative. And they even changed who took the dial pick. I mean, and it's there in black and white when you actually look at the digital evidence, um, how that all happened. You're, you're changing the order of Ann Meadows text messages with both of them. I mean, why are you doing these things? Like, when you look at there's 52 different examples that I gave the attorneys when I met with them of here's sample one, why, where's Addie Maloney's text messages to Shanann on August 13th if she was so worried and she couldn't get a hold of her. That's why she said that they were all worried. Where, wait, she never texted her. Well, how, how are you worried about her then? You didn't call her. You're not, I mean, that stuff is in black and white. Um, why is, is it omitted from the evidence that Cassie, N.A., and Shanann had a three-way text going and that Cassie actually texted at 8.53 a.m., the three-way text? Why isn't that in evidence? Why isn't that on the, on the list of your, in your timeline? They're just like omitting things and putting things wherever they want. And the, and the question is why? Again, if this guy is so guilty and he's a monster, you shouldn't have to do things like that. You shouldn't have to white out Chris's statements uh, with a white out. I mean, I'll be happy to show people that too. Uh, you shouldn't have to white out Amanda Thayer's statements um, on what time she came home and her plane you shouldn't have to roll fingerprints at the scene of the crime, but then lose those fingerprints only to take her fingerprints again at the autopsy. I mean, these are, that is not normal practice. You don't roll fingerprints uh, when somebody is telling you the nature of a crime with somebody using their hands. Um, there's just a well, list it, it, thing that can go on and on and on. And you know you can either say it's oh pl sloppy police work, uh, or you could say it doesn't matter what you want to chalk it up to. At the end of the day, this is what happened. Where's Nate's surveillance? I mean, who goes into someone's house and just takes their cell phone and starts just recording off of someone's TV? I mean, that is not normal practice. Um, no, that's in the subpoena his records that comes back and saying that nothing was recorded that day. It's like, what's going on here? You know, <laughs> what are you yeah. guys doing? Uh, well, you, got the, uh, you got the Vivint. 
wh why, why is the Vivint sealed? Why is there no videos showing Nicole Atkinson walking up, pressing the ring, the doorbell, and standing there? And, you know, where's that footage? We see Shanann's footage coming home that night, supposedly. Where is all this Vivint footage? And why can't it be shown? But yet you can say, you can let Trent Bull go on national television and talk about him having sex with Christopher Watt. I mean, that, you, you just think about that. Think about that playing field. Um, yeah, like I said, there's 52 pieces and, uh, and, and the biggest part was, was the internal investigation that would have been granted had the, the public defenders did their job, uh, which is called ineffective count. I mean, just the ineffective counsel is there. It's there all day. And uh, these, these lawyers, they don't take cases to take cases. They take cases to win, to drill, to win. So you don't, oh, I got someone to take my case. Woo, okay, no, you, you go and you get the best and they're going to, they're, they want to win the case. They want to do their job and win and when you say win a case, they're winning rights. They're winning somebody's rights back that they did not have, that they should have been afforded. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming with the, the Brady Law and everything, uh, they will be able to have full access to the discovery instead of partial, like what we can see now in public. Um, they, what should was that? One, they should have the full discovery. Um, the, the lawyers that are oh, working with you guys. They get everything. They get um, all of his files. I mean, like I said, they get, and then they get to do, they, they get to start interviewing people that were never interviewed. They get, I mean, the list is actually very long and that's why it's very expensive. It's a very expensive process of anything, not just like the, this part of it. Like if you're actually going to, you know, if, if Chris was starting with this, with these people from day one, I mean, which is kind of going to be that way once, you know, they won the 35C hearing, it, you know, cause then it all starts all over. It's like, everything's wiped. It's a new slate. Here we go. Uh, and I do think Colorado is going to try to get another plea deal after that because they have no choice. I mean, they don't want stuff to get out, but. Um, it's, they don't it, exactly have the best this is, record. This is so expensive. And if, it's and it's transparently expensive. I mean, oh, I believe that. These uh, anybody that you have an expert, you know, witness to look at stuff, and it's five hundred to a thousand dollars an hour to have those people. So, to to look at things and to take notes and do like the report. Okay, yep, yep, yep. I mean, think about just watching seven hours of Chris's Wednesday. I mean, that's seven. That's a possible seven thousand dollars just to sit there and watch that now to break it down and you know take your notes look at all this stuff um there's just everything yeah well it's just kind of mind-blowing like you know it, what actual footage that they have of chris in that morning i feel like you know there should be more cameras and stuff and um even the colorado department of transportation yeah. Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, I think when you have all the evidence out in front of you, just how a jury, so a jury pool, in a sense, you know, people convict people. Okay. So what I think is amazing about our legal system is that we all get to see everything. And then based off of those, that, that evidence, okay, then mm -hmm. You're, you're then going to know or what you think, you know, happened and is, you know, what's he guilty of? Is he guilty of first degree murder, premeditated murder? Is he guilty of manslaughter? Is he, is it this, is it that? But nobody will know that answer. And so you see the, the facts, the evidence. Um, and there's been a lot of cases out there where people get exonerated or uh, are acquitted or whatever 
that everyone's over here like, are you kidding me? This person's so guilty. You know what I mean? Like, so when someone yeah. says, are you going to accept something when it happens? Guys, I'm not accepting anything. All I know is that now the truth can be out there. And when I say the truth, I'm saying the evidence, because that's what our truths come from. Then everybody out here can then make their own judgment and opinion, just like the, the jury pool is going to do. So it's not even what the result is. It's going to, you're going to see everything then because how many people in here are going to say, did OJ Simpson do it or OJ Simpson not, you know? Uh, well, he was you know, found not guilty. Well, how many people still think OJ's guilty? You know what I mean? So it's not like, oh, when he's told that he's guilty again or whatever, or if he's innocent, there's people, if he, if he was told that he's innocent, are still going to think he's guilty. It's not about that, guys. It's, it's, it's about the process. It's about, here, you get to have your opinion about it based on facts, not based on we're all just blasting people and families and talking crap to each other like that. Why? What's going on? Yeah. It's just insanity. It, it is. And I, I can't uh, um... talk about the case. Let's talk about evidence. Like who gets, who gets on? I, I just, I don't get it. If I wanted to do that, I, I definitely wouldn't be on true crime. I would be sitting talking with, I don't know, probably like Jerry Springer and just, you know, that's just crazy. Oh, the joys of Jerry Springer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, talk about, yeah, it's like, it's like uh, what do they say? Like um, extraordinary people talk about amazing ideas. You know, when people talk about people, uh -uh, that's not what you do with your time. You talk about, no. you know, uh, there's so many other cases out there, guys, that, you know, because of money, these people are in prison because of, because of money and that's not fair and this fight for a family it's not just for the watts it's for other families out there so if you know of a case hey lana email me it says you know it's, it's help at fightforfamily.com email me hey can you take a look at this or what do you think about this if you know of people out there that because of money and because of being railroaded by you know corruption or whatever their agenda was, if you believe that somebody is, you know, innocent or um, they're just maybe not, maybe also somebody doesn't even have to be innocent, but they're not guilty of what they're being charged of. I mean, it's a big scope to, to include. Uh, do you see your, your, your um, nonprofit organization working possibly with like the instant projects or on future cases yeah. or anything like that? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's designed for that, but it's, it's in a way that it's like on more of like a, the, the innocence project has their own attorneys. Okay. Like there's, there's different, it's on a different type of level, but this is more of like a crowd sourcing way to like, if everybody was to just give a little bit here, the truth that everybody wants, we can go get it then. You know, you can't, I, it's unfortunately the law is a rich man's game and it shouldn't be that way, but it is. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. Um, how, how long do you think the, the time frame or the process before all the paperwork and getting in front of the judge and all that will be, what's your guess? I mean, you, you never want to file right like, on the deadline. So his deadline is in, uh, what's it, November 6th or 19th, depending on which one they go. Um, uh, let's see. They have to file by November 6th or November 19th, whichever one they go by. And you probably want to give yourself at least like a 30-day window before the deadline. Yeah. But I think everything, I mean, the filings happen as far as like releases and then, you know, you have your, your motion to like your motion, the courts that you're taking on a case and someone's your client. I mean, there's paperwork with that and it's all of it's official and it's with the, uh, so all that's happening and uh, they, they'll start once they put that in here, 
usually takes no, no more than 72 hours to get somebody's file because everything should be e-file. Um, but like I said, it's, this had to be, this had to start now because they need, I mean, any good attorney, they, they're going to tell you, any good firm that takes this on, you need, this is, a, this, this takes time. You need people on, yeah. um, you know, round that, like, this is what they'll be doing. They're putting other things on hold to do this. So. Well, I mean, that's kind of the thing too, is. Um, it's not that much time before the, you know, it has to be filed. Yeah. I think what's so critical too is besides filing, like what you put into uh, the, the motion, uh, you know, it's has to be pretty good. Um, uh, sorry. I'm, I'm load it all, get to load it with everything. Cause you only, you know, occasionally though, they may let you put like an amendment or a supplemental in there, but you can't bank on them. The judge will let you do that. So everything has to be in your, you know, in your motion. And that's like, you know, I don't know if you guys have been following like the Stephen Avery thing, but when his one motion that he did, it was like a hundred and some pages. I mean, it's just, it's a ton. You, you want to get it right. You want to, and you shouldn't be rushing things like this. So they're, and they're not because they're at, like, you guys will see here, go ahead and get on. Um, but the lawyers, uh, the will all be listed there with their bios. Uh, like I said, it's a dream team 2.0. They're, they're that good. Uh, and that was the point, though. You don't go and go to Denver to get a call Saul lawyer. Okay. You, you might as well just take your money and burn it. You need to go. If you're going to do this, you have to go and do it the right way. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to work. You know, you need people that specialize in this. And that has... Oh, most definitely. And um, with that, I, pe there's been rumors like Chris is scared to go back to Colorado. Is that true? Or would he be able to stay in Wisconsin and be able to do everything necessary with the, the pandemic going on? Well, what was it? Uh, uh, people have been saying Chris is scared to go back to uh, Colorado. And no, he Would he be able to stay in Wisconsin and no, he has to go. no, yeah. Like if you're saying when, if his, if he, if his, uh, 35 C is granted. Yeah. He goes back to Colorado. He doesn't stay in Wisconsin. You have to also, he's be, not also to be by your attorneys. That's the other thing is by your attorneys. You're working like, you know, side by side, you should be anyways with your attorneys. And that's obviously not what happened his first go around. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be in a different situation though. It's not like, uh, they were able to do what they did to him in world County because his public defenders let that shit happen. I mean, there's just no other way to put yeah. it. This is what happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, again, it's just amazing. Like how quickly the police went there and got the evidence and then they, you know, gave the house or released the house back. And then with the, the roof checks going back and packing it up and stuff before a trial or anything, I, it's just mind blowing to me <laughs> when they would do something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I will get here uh, out of your way so you can do other fun things. Um, with your group, unless you, you know, I just wanted to say that I'm really sorry uh, to hear about your dad and I hope that, you know, you're doing okay. Oh, uh, thank you. No, I'm doing pretty well. It was hard, but I mean, it's part of life. And I, uh, again, appreciate you coming on and giving us the update exactly. Yeah, I appreciate you having me out here with you, Cooter. Cheers uh -huh. to you. Here's to, um, you know, you coming out into this crazy YouTube world. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, just, well, just, yeah. everyone has a right to be heard and express their opinion. It's That's one great thing about our country. Uh, 
did any of your did any of your viewers have questions? I always use uh, some of that. I'm not well, on. I'm sure they. Let me put my stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, let me uh, see if yeah. I can find any here. Here, yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, let's see. Where's the question? Uh, what about our questions right here? Um, I'm skeptical and I hope you're right. I want to believe you. Uh, well, you should believe me. Um, the stuttering started when Kay first typed. I told Kay if she wanted to do a neutral channel, I would give her 60 minutes on a neutral channel so she cannot uh, mute people out. Um, that's what I offered. I, I don't play games. This is not a game. There's nothing really to debate. Um, but Kay couldn't do that. She, I said, I gave you 60 minutes on Monday or Tuesday. So go ahead and Lana, let's uh, go you know, right now. See, yeah, Kay, like I'm not, I just, here you go. Uh, I'm actually not available. I hear I'm with Cooter and then I'm getting off with Cooter as I just said. So I offered you Monday or Tuesday night. Okay, I'll give you 60 minutes. So no one's scared. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing to debate. I mean, what was there debate? Uh, question, show your 501c professional people. Oh yeah, it'll be right. It'll be in the website. So you'll see it. All of it's there. Um, cases, I won't mute you, Lana. Uh, do you actually talk to Chris Watts or just through his parents? No, I talk to Chris. I don't, it's not about, I don't need to really talk to anybody because that's, I do the work. It, it actually takes a lot of work during the day to, to do the paperwork. Um, so I don't have time to, I guess, chit chat all day. I wish I did, but I don't. Your definition, you're the definition of a game or a trick. Sounds good, Stephanie. Uh, do, do I know NK? I don't even know. I don't know NK. Um, I'm trying to, you called it a debate, Lana. Kay just wants to talk to you. No, actually Kay wrote me and said, when are you going to come on my channel and debate me? She said that to me in a private message. Uh, so does he really want the 35C? Yes, he does want a 35C. Um, that's, that's not even a question. I mean, wouldn't she want a 35C? Please keep chat to perfect. Why would she mute you if she's offering you to come on her panel? I just said I would be happy to do it on, on someone else's. Guys, please keep the questions oh, related previous. to the case. I've never been caught or whatever fraud. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about with that. But that's, like I said... You're not able to get um, loans and lines of credit and, and businesses in your name if you're a fraud. So that's completely delusional. Uh, can you prove he wants it? That he wants the 35C? Yeah, I can prove that. Uh, this is a good one. What will be your role in this moving forward? Lana, anything in Pacific? Mm. Well, that's why I can no longer talk about the case. Uh, that's why I said that this was my last times doing this because I can no longer talk about stuff because I had talked to the lawyers. So um, it's a, I, I'll think I'll be right by the sides of Ronnie and Cindy and um, just helping out where I can. Um, I know that they have a great uh, private investigator. She's one of the best. And I'm looking forward to, I got to get her a bunch of stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. And they're just an amazing, they're just an amazing group. Uh, and they even snatched up one, one person outside uh, because she was the best at what she did. So 
Wayana, if I mute you, I will give you five. I don't want money. I wanted the money to go to the families. And I stated that I said, we could have some fun with it. And whoever got more super chats with our name next to it. Okay. wins the debate. It was like a ha ha. As long as the money goes to the families type thing, because I'm the first person to tell you, I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't make money off of this and it's to help the family. So if I wanted to make money, why wouldn't I start a YouTube channel? I don't, that's not what this is about. Um, I want to help people. I think that I'm good at what I do and I want to help people in need families, especially. Okay. If this happened to your family, just put yourself in other people's shoes. If, if, you, if you can do that. Um, okay. I will give it to them. I will give them 500. So now critical K you're going to give the Watts $500. If I come on your channel, is that what you're saying? Um, there's, there's four, he has four lawyers, not one. Lana, you can't talk anymore since she's already talked to, so can't give any info. Has NA or her attorney responded to your ex? <laughs> no, I don't know what, just talk to me, Lana. I'm sorry, Cooter, you're a good guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ada. You know, I, I'm not biased on this. And again, what's more important to me is having correct due process and stuff, people getting railroaded. That's that's what's important to me. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm just like anyone else in this case, what happened that Chris, night, and I'm hoping. Hold on one second, I want to answer this. Gee, uh, why would Chris turn down pro bono lawyers? Chris, there was no pro bono lawyers, um, but high fives to whoever told you that. Um, I was there, I set up every meeting and I attended them. Um, there was no pro bono players. I don't know where they're getting this. Um, Liana, can you tell us why the Watts turned down? That's, I just answered that. That's nobody turned down pro bono lawyers. Um, sorry that that information's out there. That's a hundred percent false. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I don't think people would turn that down. The only way you would turn down pro bono lawyers is if they're not qualified lawyers, but there was no pro bono lawyers on the table. Uh, and like I said, right now, even if there was, we have the best and you need the best for what he's up against. What evidence can you provide to support Chris Watson's 35C? A ton. And if you were here earlier, I think I went through some things. Um, there's a lot. Uh, and it's all going to come out. That's the best part about all of this. And I just think that, um, you know, well, critical. why is Kelly distancing from you? I uh, don't know what you're talking about. So distancing from Kelly. Um, I didn't, when, when did I know Kelly? And I guess I'm just curious on when me and Kelly became, do you think I know Kelly from like from my life? I, I, I haven't known Kelly. I actually just met Kelly for the first time in Denver. I met Kelly for the first time in Denver. Uh, the Watts turned down Mark Gillespie. They did himself. Well, actually I have 18 text messages from Mark Gillespie that were all in a row um, and him using profound language and talking to the Watts with complete disrespect. Uh, you shouldn't, you guys listen to everything you guys hear on YouTube. I mean, that's, I think that's why this is going on. And that's the whole point of the website is if, if everybody just collectively used this energy that they have, if we just used it to help a family, like we can be, cause we got a lot of good, a lot of smart people that actually if they wanted to do the right things could, um, but, this, like, he said, she said stuff. There's no he said, she said stuff. <sighs> well, I appreciate you coming on. And um, do you know, your point? Larry, just Larry, she's not doing nothing. Is that English? This is a waste. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, what kind of content will you put on for your podcast once you get that up and going? 
Oh, uh, the, the, yeah, the name of the podcast is uh, Jamie's Journal. So it should give you a nice little sneak peek of what it is all about. But this is about the families. It should be about the families. I think all of everything to do with it. And just you just, you just eliminate the um, false narratives. Lana, why can't I find your nonprofit group as being registered? It is registered and it's, uh, I, I gave all that information earlier in the, in the show. Or was, did I give that to you, Peter? Right, I gave you all that yeah, stuff too. I, yeah, the uh, fightforfamily.com, I think it was typed in here a couple of times. If one of the mods could retype it in, I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Will you know everything when the lawyers find out? I don't know what that, that question is. I'm just trying to read it. This is moving way too fast. Um, uh, Jamie will be dumping you within the week, Lana. <laughs> Sorry, Kay, but she won't. But I do appreciate your, um, your kind words. I do appreciate you coming here uh, and supporting. Uh, Scarlett, you're awesome. You've always been awesome. Uh, Scarlett gives like the best super chats out there, and I know that she thought they were going to the family. Um, so, uh, Lana knows NK truth bomb. Oh dear Jesus. Uh, let's see. Well, when you meet her, tell her I want to go on a date with her. She owes me dinner. <laughs> oh, NK. Yeah. So just when it comes time, if you're remembering me, I thought it'd be awesome. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but yeah, Scarlett always is taking care of people and uh, I just felt bad. She was doing these super chats for like a hundred dollars a pop. And she's like, well, this is all going to the family. And I was like, what? And so I had to, Scarlett's in my group and I had to let her know. I was like, hey, just giving you a heads up. I know that you think that and you should probably ask the people that you do that to. So she was under the impression that they were going to the family. Um, so. <sighs> do, Lana, do you know who, I don't even know who, are you guys are Luda, Ludacris? I don't know Ludacris, no, sorry. What is this Jamie's Journal? Jamie's Journal is the name of the podcast that will premiere in April. Uh, that's, it, it, there's an episode once a week. Uh, it's all pre-recorded and it drops on Fridays at 5 p.m. So you have like, you know, your whole weekend, uh, whatever time you can, you know, put your earbuds in or whatever and get your hours worth of your, you know, your podcast and you know, then next Friday comes another episode, but that's part of the membership that you're getting with your donation. And you get obviously all the information as it comes in real time, but you're getting the podcast as well as you're donating to support um, this really expensive cause. I mean, it's very, very expensive. Uh, and I could just, you know, if it was my family or family that, you know, I knew I would want and hope that people that can afford it to, to give extra, you know, have it go to something that's for a good cause. And since we're all true crime people, if you want the truth, you're, you know, you're donating to a cause that's gonna get the truth. So. <clears throat> um, again, if one of the mods could put the, the website down so people have access, that would be great. Appreciate Just, it. Wondering why your videos aren't, I don't understand. I can't read. Let's see. Lana, where did you get your MC certification? Uh, I don't think it, you need a certification to advocate for something you believe in. So, sorry. I don't think that. Uh, is there anything else like you would like to say to the people? or um, 
what's been going on or anything you would like to express? Oh, no, I was just trying to get all their, you know, questions in. And, yeah. uh, will you have a variety of guests on the podcast? What type of discussions will you be having? Um, there may be special guests like here or there, but that'd be like a pop-up video that wouldn't have anything to do with the podcast. The podcast is a, um, a story that's being told from start to finish. If you were to listen to, you know, something like serial, uh, but it's not, you know, these aren't lives. These are pre-recorded, and it's actually, you know, telling a story from start to finish. <sighs> um, here we go. It's why can't you just call into Kay's channel and if you feel disrespected, you can just hang up. It's not that difficult. Um, I think you're right. It's not that difficult, but I have no reason <laughs> to go on. Kay, they have nothing to do. I mean, there's, I don't talk about people. I talk about things and I don't like to go on channels that talk about people. So I talk about evidence, I talk about processes, I talk about, um, I don't talk about people, so. So we love you, Cooter Brown, we love you. <laughs> I appreciate it, everyone. And um, again, I, I admire you coming on and, you know, putting your site out there and how you feel, and I'll, especially for the due process, which I am big on, that everyone should deserve fairly and equally. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, this family, like I said, the family deserves it. And I think a lot of people out there, they want the truth. It doesn't matter what side. I think that a lot of people just, hey, they just want the truth. So um, I think NK is still on the table. I saw that by C-Dub. What is your opinion on NK's involvement? I think NK is 100% on the table. I don't think that uh, NK is off the table. I think that everybody's on the table. And especially with... Um, you know, her and Christopher talking that Monday night while he was on the phone with the police on one phone and then the other phone with, you know, her, uh, there is a, a, a huge question mark that surrounds if those phone calls overlapped. But I think that everybody should be, um, it's, it's like anything you do. You, no one's out of the kitchen. I think everybody should be on the hot seat. I think everybody should be truly investigated. I think that this case should start, you know, start start to finish. You got to go back to the drawing board from the beginning. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's just amazing to like how many of these investigations, you know, just went horribly wrong with things being tampered with and not besides this case, but many cases. And, you know, there's I the not there's no, there's no secret about the nonprofit name. The nonprofit name is Fight for a Family. And it has and it has four different domain names registered to the one website. So, and I went over this all in the beginning. So you can go and listen to the beginning of Cooter's uh, show. There's nothing about it. It's all there. Um, I just don't like to sit up here and repeat the same thing over and over. I'm, we're trying to, you know, talk about as many things as we possibly can. And I have three more minutes, Cooter, it's 97 minutes. So I got three more minutes. What do you wanna, what do you wanna say, Cooter? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, again, thank you for coming on. And you know, everyone again has a right to their opinion. It's important for the due process for everybody, it doesn't matter on what side you are, but to have a balanced justice system is very important. And, you know, there's been a lot of misinformation out there. Yeah. And the, and the, the nonprofit organization is registered. Okay. It's a uh, fight for a family Inc. Okay. So if you're just putting in fight for a family, no. And actually when you have a nonprofit organization, you have to have another registered agent, another business basically that is 
vouching for you and that holds like, like I was going over this earlier. Uh, and my registered agent is Legal Corp Solutions LLC. So like you have to have, you can't just have, in order for you to get a nonprofit, you have to have a registered uh, agent involved. And it's, like I said, it's all filed currents. It's, it's all there. <laughs> so, um, and it will all be there on the website. I mean, I think Brooke just said it best. If you're transparent and you're truthful and you just keep it that way, then everything can be, can be good. Uh, I will say this, Kay, if you're still out there, I meant every word that I said, I can, I can do Monday night at nine. Okay. Or I can do uh, Tuesday night. All right. I, I made that comment to you. So it's, if you want to talk facts and you want to talk about the discovery, I will not sit and talk about people. Never, ever, ever. But I said, I'd give you 60 minutes. So if you want 60 minutes to talk about facts and to talk about the evidence in this case, sure. You can have, you know, we can do that, but um, does Cooter not sound neutral? He is neutral. Cooter is, that's why I, I wanted to come here on Cooter's uh, channel. Um, he had asked me back when he first launched his channel. And uh, I said, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do it at some point. And well, now's the time, because like I said, I won't be on anything. I, my Facebook group, our last meetup is uh, tomorrow. So I mean, that's why, that's why also I said Monday or Tuesday, uh, okay, because I can't talk after that. So I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Uh, a, a con artist. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, sounds good, Dave. Have a good night, Dave. All right. Again, uh, okay. thank you uh, for coming on. Uh, I know this is a lot of heat coming at you and stuff, but I believe in due time, the truth will reveal itself. And I'm sure your hard work will pay off. Yeah, no, it already, you know, the thing is, it already has. Um, we got who we wanted. It's like draft day, you know, you go to the draft and you want to get your guy. We got our people. And so definitely the hard work has paid off. And now you just got people that are hating on, on the hard work. And it's a sad day. It's sad to see that. Um, so I think that. You just keep doing what you, you've been doing. And I've never cared about what anybody has said about me ever in my life. And I definitely won't start now. So I know that the Watts family has a lot of supporters out there and you don't have to like me. I'm not in it to win friends. I I'm in, I'm in this to help a family. Um, and I came in this with don't trust anybody. So if I come across as, you know, a stern you know, person, it's because this family has gotten screwed over for two and a half years by people that preyed on them and acted like they're friends. I mean, why? Who does, who has the time to do that? <laughs> Who's the time for that? Um, but so I just, I know that there's a lot of good people out there. A lot of good people out there support the Watts and a uh, Valentine's Day card. Do you want to send me one? You could send me a Valentine's Day card next year. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> Valentine's Day happened already. <laughs> uh, well, people have been wondering if um, he sent Chris a, a card. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's being said, Lana sent Chris a Valentine's Day card. <laughs> like, I, that I sent him one from his, from his daughters. Why would that be a negative thing if I did? I'm, I'm confused. Is that a negative thing? Like, I, don't, I guess that was my question. Uh, stop the victim bashing of Nicole Kessinger. I like that. I like that name. I didn't realize they'll let you go that long. Uh, well, oh, please. Who has the time for that? This mocking. I wasn't mocking Shanann, guys. I'm so sorry that you only saw 11 edited Craft and Barnes videos. I cannot help that. Um, if you actually saw all the videos, you'd see that this is all about Thrive. 
Um, it was even talked about with the lawyers. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you go and take a polygraph, for example, the one of the questions that they ask you when you take a polygraph or they tell you is, is you're not supposed to be on any type of caffeine. You're not supposed to take coffee in the morning. You can't, uh, it's, caffeine is a big no-no. And it's like, wait, ca- black label, double patching black label. Do you know how much caffeine, green tea, et cetera, do you know how much is in that cooter? I don't, I'm sure it's a lot though. How many cups? You're supposed to tell somebody, you know, if you actually have something set up for a polygraph, you actually have a pre-test, like you, first of all, it's a scheduled appointment that you have like a scheduled set time. And then you talk to them about things like you shouldn't do this. You have this, da, 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 da. so you're going through all of this stuff. And at the end of the day with this polygraph, so many things that were done incorrect, but the one thing that just stuck out to me like crazy was the whole caffeine. And here, all Chris talked about on Tuesday night, I mean, is this thrive stuff. He's just repeatedly talking to Graham about thrive. And then it's like this workout, um, you know, it enhances your workouts It enhances, you know, it's, uh, takes away your appetite. It gives you, I mean, all this stuff that's in it. And you hear a guy talking about this and he's saying, yeah, I use it. D- wouldn't you, I mean, if you think it just goes out of your system because you don't have a patch on, that's not how that works. No, it, it takes time to burn. Just like anything. Yeah. It- oh, I've got guys, a polygraph is inadmissible a hundred percent. But what you cannot do is tell somebody they use the polygraph. You cannot tell somebody that they failed a polygraph to then try to railroad them into something. That is what you're not allowed to do. You don't, you should, you guys should read up on the correct ways to administer a polygraph. Okay. And like I told you, this case is going to come down to procedure and conduct and that they didn't do anything right. And when you don't do stuff right, it's you're violating people's rights. You're not administering the test right. You're not administering. And then that leads to then your actions afterwards. So go and read up about all about a polygraph. And that when you told, when you tell somebody that they fail that, there's, there's things that you have to do when, after a test, and that's not what happened in the situation. So, but cheers to everybody. Is your nonprofit a five? Yeah, it's, it has to be, you can't just have stuff that's not legit. It's not just all the paperwork. If you guys are so concerned all your answers will be right on that website. Okay. There's nothing to hide. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't go and tell the world about something that wouldn't be legit. Why? I mean, that is just beyond, I mean, but I get it though. We have, I have haters because God forbid Lana was able to help a family and I'm doing something that none of these other people could do. I get that. I get that there's jealous people out there. But how about just stop the jealousy and just be like, wow, this is really going to happen. They finally, they, they have a lawyer. They have a, they have a really good lawyer. Wow. This is amazing. Like, why can't people be excited for that process and actually how it came to light? You know, you guys watched, um, hopefully have seen, if you haven't, you should, cause it's a really good documentary that, uh, don't F with cats. Um, the other, uh, this, this crowdsourcing slash like average normal people being able to help. Like, I'm sorry. I would get behind you, Cooter. I'd get behind anybody. I'd be like, oh my gosh, wait, how did this happen? And da, 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 da. you know, you would just yeah. embrace things like that, you know, but it's not about jealousy. It is because it looks really, really bad when you're writing these types of things because I, I don't, then what is it? It's just hate then. So it's hate. Oh, people don't want to get ripped off. Well, you guys get ripped off every day when you're in Patreons and paying for all this content that you don't get all the lies you're paying for lies. At least now you can pay for the truth. You can know that, Hey, I'm the reason that Christopher Watts has the type of lawyer he has. I'm the reason 
that this is possible? Don't you want to be part of something versus, oh, I'm just going to go pay for these lies about, I mean, just God knows what the next thing's coming up. The, the main important thing is to see within time what will happen. We all, you know, interest in this case and what happened, especially that night of August 13th. But this is a way for us to have the whole truth come out in due time. So just be patient, people, and let her do her thing. Let's just let things roll. Ask to do anything. You're right. I mean, if you want to do it, it's great. And none of the information goes to me. It's a third-party source, so it's not not me. So, but I appreciate you, um, and I think that... Um, I think that you're coming into, maybe you can change YouTube, Peter. Maybe you can just oh. be the person that gets, like, that only allows facts out and doesn't let, oh. you know, because you are, you're down the middle. You want, you're on the right side of the coin and the right side of the coin isn't families. The right side of the coin is either you're about the law or you're not, and you're about justice and you're about rights. And that's the only side of the coin anybody needs to be on. Yeah, well, I appreciate you coming on and um, giving us some more information. I don't, uh, I don't, and I will be with the Watts till the end, and you can mark, you can put that in your book. But cheers. Cheers. All right, I'll talk to you later, Peter. Right. Hey. All right, thank you. Yes. Thanks again. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Like I said, uh, text me whatever you're feeling, you know, down. You got some friends out there, so give us a shout. We'll be there for you, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome, huh? Bye. All right. Bye.